Welcome to the Insights in Accounting podcast with me, Rob Brown, coming out every Tuesday to accounting practitioners and fintech influencers all over the world. I'm thrilled to have with me today another guest host, Lucy Coyne. Good day, Lucy. Hi, Rob. How are you? We're doing splendid. Wonderful to have you with us. And this is one of five shows going out every week, Lucy. We're getting you to guest on a few of these because you run your own firm and you're an influencer in the accounting community. How good is it running a firm these days? Is it a good time to be an accountant? I'd say it's a pretty good time to be an accountant. There's obviously challenges with uh, economy, um, the the merry-go-round of uh, PMs and chancellors and various things that are thrown at us. But people are going to need their accountants more than ever. So in terms of setting that value proposition and need for your client base or potential new clients, I don't think there's ever been a better time. Mm. Well, on our Insights in Accounting show, we pick out something in the news that has caught your eye and relate it to the world of accountants. And you've picked a wonderful piece here by the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, that paragon of news, and it's called The Productivity Paranoia Managers Can't Shake. We'll put the link in the show notes, but why did this catch your eye, Lucy? So this is something that we have battled with at Mazuma over the course of the pandemic and beyond. And it's a very interesting cultural shift shift because we came from a business that was all always sat in one office, could always see each other. And we moved to fully remote. And now we're dealing with hiring situations, especially in kind of sales and non-technical, non-accounting parts of the business, where uh, traditionally these have been people who would have loved to have been in office together. And now even those roles are wanting to have hybrid working or fully remote working. And we've had some really interesting discussions around, well, is so-and-so doing their work? Or oh, I saw they're away from teams for 25 minutes in the middle of the day. And mm-hmm. well, why haven't they done this? Or I can't get hold of them exactly when I want to. And it can, unless it's carefully managed, it can quite easily breed a paranoia. And you can go down the rabbit hole of, well, is this member of staff doing what they're supposed to be doing? And how do I know? So I read this article and I just thought it spoke to some of those themes. And it would have felt quite nice that there, maybe this is a ubiquitous uh, problem that lots of people are facing. And yeah, I just thought I, I quite like the, the phrase productivity paranoia. I, th- I thought that was quite cute. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's built as a general business article by somebody called Alex Christian. But we could apply this very much to the accounting world. Let me just tee it up here. It says years after employees began working from home en masse, managers are still unconvinced that their teams don't slack off when they're out of the office. It quotes some research from Microsoft from 20 odd thousand global knowledge workers that many managers still have issues trusting employees who work remotely. And 85% of leaders say the shift to hybrid work has made it hard to be confident that employees are being productive. So this is clearly a big problem, Lucy. It's a huge problem. And, you know, even very public figures like uh, Alan Sugar on Twitter has been quite famously um, berating those who don't work in the office. We've had uh, politicians such as Jacob Rees-Mogg insisting that everyone come back to work so they can see what they're up to. And I think in accountancy, you know, we are increasingly using cloud tools and there's the timesheets, the big timesheets debate. Do you have an outputs based business or do you have an input based business? Mm. Do you want people to track every moment of the time or are you just happy to trust they're going to get the job done? And those themes are really interesting here. And I loved what it talked about in terms of the bias. You know, we worked in an office and I definitely walked past people who were on Facebook or playing solitaire or something and definitely weren't doing their job eight hours a day at their desk and I think there's some stat and I can't remember it comes from where there is a stat about British office workers where you're only actually truly productive for about three and a half hours a day out of those eight hours Mm -hmm. so have we always been productive in the office that productivity has it always been there or are we just kidding ourselves that just because we can see somebody and they quickly shut down solitaire as you walk past that somehow they're doing their job properly uh yeah I just thought it was really interesting There's a nice quote in the middle of it as well. It says, when the work isn't physically seen, it's easy to assume that it should have been done sooner. Yeah. So we're chasing things, aren't we? We don't see it. Have you done it? Uh, Could it have been done quicker? Did you expand your day to get that job done? There's a lot of mistrust and assumptions going on here when you can't see people in real life. 
And I think what's interesting is that most managers would who manage staff would quite happily insist that they are very busy all day and they are definitely being productive. But yet I imagine their higher ups are probably questioning the same thing about them. So it's definitely a trust issue. It's a cultural issue. And I think it's um, it, it, it kind of leans itself into this whole do we want people, do we value people for the time they spend sat at a desk or do we value them for the outputs, the, the what they create for the business and the, maybe the money they bring in or the clients they service or the, the things that they are creating? Um, what Where's the value there? And and then is that, that salary, is that tied to the hourly rate of what they're working at and sitting there, in which case you're just paying them for physically being present or is their worth what they're bringing? And I think it's just got some very interesting themes around that. Mm. I'm going to ask you what you do in your firm in a moment, Lucy, but let me just quote Ayelet Fishback, Professor of Behavioral Science at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business in the US. Even though knowledge work is typically outcome-based, managers have traditionally measured productivity by hours spent at the desk. And time is the most common metric of productivity because it's simple to measure. And accountants have been doing that for thousands of years, haven't they, Lucy, really? Good old it's time easier to track. It's easier to track a worker's time in the office than the quality of their ideas. What do you make of that? Quality of ideas is a really interesting phrase because there are some people who create ideas at the drop of a hat constantly. I always say that my problem isn't ideas. I've got a million ideas a day. My problem is always getting them done. Yes. So I'm, if I'm, I'm never, I've got my, if my value is based on ideas, I view, I'd be a gazillionaire. If it was based on actually getting those ideas done, I, I wouldn't be in a job. Mm. So it's about that team thing. Um, but yeah, you, you asked about what we do at Mazuma and, it's a battle we constantly have. So we've never been timesheet based in the traditional sense. We've never been measuring your hours, billing them to a client. We've we record time against clients and projects so we can check for efficiency, whether that's a client problem or an internal staff training problem. Um, but uh, it's never been something we've used to bill. Uh, however, this concept of being at a desk or being available is still deeply rooted throughout the organization even though it's something that we've never praised we've never rewarded people for presenteeism when we were in office-based scenario if I was walking out and there were people still there I thought why are you still here go home if you can't get your job done in the time that we've got here then I need to know is that a me problem or is that a you problem I don't want you sat here till eight o'clock at night for the sake of being here and, and having this kind of strange kind of obsession with being the last in the office I, I don't like that culture and yet we still find it quite pervasive throughout the organization and we have to do a lot of fighting to get over that and to get over this thing of staff going well they haven't been on teams for 25 minutes I don't know where they are I'm like but they've mm -hmm. done their work and they're, they're maybe out for a walk in the middle of the day and we talked I think a couple of episodes ago about um kind of you know, flexible working days and and kind of the non- um, non-linear working patterns we might now experience and all these things kind of mesh together into a world where we're going to have to start trusting people trust is earned granted but we want the best from people we want to play in a world and get the best from people in, in the world and the way they want to work we're going to have to start trusting people and using something other than you know, the only finite resource we have which is time to measure it by mm -hmm. I want to ask you to define paranoia productivity as you interpret it from this piece. Uh, while you're considering that, let me just quote this bit. Some managers feel work and effort have to be seen to be believed. So the employees are, the employees are seeking more flexibility and even seen working from home as a right. But if it's not seen and it's not tangible and it's not tracked and it's not evident, then it has to be seen to be believed or it never happened. There's something of that going on. Definitely. Um, you To answer your question about what I would define productivity paranoia as, I'd say it's the pervasive belief you have as a manager or leader that your staff aren't doing enough and right. you've got no proof of what they're doing. Mm. So you're always a little bit paranoid that they're just sat around you know, drinking a glass of wine or you know, snacking on chocolates when they should be doing something else. And I suppose what I'd ask everyone to do would be to, when they get that feeling, challenge themselves to question, is that a me problem? Is that my 
set of core beliefs that I have to constantly kind of demonstrate what I'm doing that makes me believe my staff aren't doing it? Or am I happy to uh, wait to see what they've done for the day and then make my judgment? And I think you can overcome it in a few different ways. We have little end of the day bullet points in certain teams. So we have certain group chats in within MS teams. And at the end of the day, we just get people to throw in five or six bullet points of what they've done today, which just, I think, lets everyone know what people have been working on. Sometimes they're not particularly exciting. Sometimes they're great. And it just lets everyone kind of touch base once a day with that. We have little all hands meetings at the start of the week for 15 minutes to kick off the week with. We have our management huddle first thing on the Monday morning afterwards. So we have these touch bases where we we, we know what everyone's up to when we have reporting and things in place. But for the most part, we've got to trust people a little bit more. And mm -hmm. if your staff aren't aren't producing the goods, then no amount of tying them to a desk and making them fill out a timesheet or watching what they do is going to stop them playing solitaire. That's retro solitaire. There's better games now, but I'm clearly stuck in the dark ages. <laughs> I totally get that. Toon, Toon Blast or Candy Crush or anything <laughs> else can be inserted there. I like the idea of a, of a wrap up and what have you done today? Because we can forget what we achieved during the day. My daughter's in North Carolina right now. I'm studying there. And I sent her a message the other day saying, how's your day gone? Tell me one thing you've eaten today that was a little bit different. One person you've met today that you didn't know or had a nice conversation with. One thing you learned today that you didn't know before. And one thing you're looking forward to about tomorrow. So she had to think about how her day had gone and how tomorrow is lining up to be more intentional, to give it some structure or metric or tracking, if you like. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I love it when you and I start our conversations. We ask, we try to be, get quite specific about what we've what we've been up to. But that's great because it forces your brain to go beyond the kind of generic, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, fine. Not mm. bad. Everything's okay. We do these little wrap ups to make people evaluate their day. And if you genuinely don't have much to say in your little wrap up of three or four bullet points, you might question yourself. Well, what have I done today? Have I been productive? Have I got something? Done? Or did I just have my head stuck in the one big thing and I made tons of progress on it? In which case, that's also fine. It's just a little, it's a little, a little accountability tool, a little bit of fun, and a little bit of way to self-evaluate your your day on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think it works quite nicely as a team. There's always a few gifts thrown in as well and a few emojis, which makes it nice. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice little wrap up. Yeah. Let me just quote a little bit to finish off this article, Lucy, and then you can give us your key takeaways for the accountants listening, particularly the leaders and managers that might be experiencing productivity paranoia. It says at the end of this piece, paranoia represents a failure by managers to adapt to the new world of work. Employees are eagerly grabbing the new hybrid version, but employers need to learn how to change and fight their biases and reframe how to assess good work performance. It says in closing, to flourish longer term, leaders will need to work past productivity paranoia and start building this culture of trust and empowerment for their company and their employees. I guess, Lucy, we're still in a new world. We're still emerging from COVID. There's a lot of uh, recalibrating to do and getting this right. And what does good look like? What would be your closing thoughts and, and key takeaways for the managers listening? Key takeaways, I'd say that you need to look at what is the metric that moves the needle for your business and how are you going to measure it? If your metric in what moves the needle is being able to measure what everybody does all day, every day, I'd say you've maybe got a bit of a problem. Mm. Look at what's the key metric, what's moving the needle, how are you going to measure it? Communicate, make it clear what you expect of people and let them shine. Trust them and let them shine. And if they don't? If they don't, you've got recourse. That's what contracts are for. That's what uh, HR procedures and policies are for. If they're not working out, it's a case of retraining, recalibrating. Or if they're not the right person in the business, you let them go. And give them the gift of time. And quickly, Lucy, Lucy, is it easier for people to hide and slack and quiet quit these days if they're not in an office or has it always been easy to be a shyster and shy away from work if you really want to? I think if you're the sort of person who's going to phone it in and do the bare minimum, you're going to do that whether you're sat at home or whether you're sat in an office. Yeah. Uh, it's about employing the right people. And if you employ the right people, it's going to work for you. If yeah. you've got someone who's fundamentally a little bit lazy and a little bit of a um, minimum effort, they're going to be the same regardless of where they are. And they'll get found out either way, won't they? Of course they will. Of course they will. Yeah. Been brilliant, Lucy. Thank you so much for bringing that wonderful piece to our attention. 
This has been Insights in Accounting coming out every Tuesday and check out our other shows as well. Enjoy the rest of your day and trust people to get it right. Keep a little eye on them if they get it wrong and check out Productivity Paranoia in the show notes. 